congratulations for winning Best Short on Script Summit. Well, thank you. And I do have to say, um, I cannot begin to tell you like how many uh, compliments and people have reached out to me um, because of that. It's, uh, it's a very uh, well-respected competition. I love doing all of these episodes. I get really excited about them, but this one is really special. We have one of the winner, winners from Script Summit on. This is Kelly Lamphere Dash. She is our shorts winner, uh, and uh, part of her prize is coming on the show. And we get to talk about her and, and learn about her. Um, exciting because Script Summit is listed literally as one of the best screenwriting contests in the world. So I always am so happy to talk to the winners because they are so talented. Um, and the name of your script is A Stop Along the Road. And before we kind of dive into that script and learn about it, I want to get, I want to learn about you and what brought you into writing. Oh, wow. Um, so I realized um, I've been a writer most of my life. Um, I was actually rummaging through some boxes <laughs> recently, and I literally found um, a book that I wrote as a child. I won't say how many decades ago, but it was a while ago. Um, and I I made this beautiful cover art, and I had it all, you know, put together. My penmanship was beautiful. I don't know. Back in the day, <laughs> I guess we, we learned to write, you know, uh, cursive in a lovely way, um, it was very, and I had, you know, inserted some images. It was all very well put together. And somehow, and I do not even remember this, somehow I had managed to get the library at school to put it in the library. Aww. And and a couple of kids had actually even checked it out. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> And I was like, oh my gosh, because it was dated. So that's how, how I know how old it is. And I was like, I don't even remember this. I'm like, and I do remember as a kid, you know, like writing stories and making up stories and, you know, in the summertime, you know, like fooling around and putting together plays and play acting and all that kind of stuff. I remember, and I was involved with theater when I was, you know, in high school and then in college. And I have a degree actually in film studies, um, but it's, oddly through a theater department oh okay <laughs> um and long story uh i i had wanted to write scripts at the time but back in the day there really weren't uh i live in minneapolis um grew up in the twin cities and um i stayed local uh for college and back in the day we didn't have um a lot of resources to learn screenwriting there were some outlets for, you know, being involved with film or learning, you know, film equipment, that sort of thing. Um, but there wasn't a lot for, for screenwriting. And so I wanted to do screenwriting, but I didn't have a lot of resources. And so um, I tried to learn on my own. That was a terrible disaster. Um, so I put it on the back burner and um, went and did a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, did some work in the in the local film community, decided to go back to grad school, went back to grad school. And then ironically, my career just completely pivoted to something totally different. Did that for many, many years and then came back to film um, about, it's been about 12, 13 years now. So when I came back to film, um, the two things that ended up happening to me was I, there were plenty of screenwriting courses at that point. Um, and I found um, a great teacher. He's been my mentor all these years. Um, so I found a great teacher and mentor, uh, found a great community uh, to build with. Um, I have a loyal script group that I've been in all this time, uh, found other uh, community resources. Um, actually, I'm uh, on the board of a, of a group called Screenwriters Workshop. And, um, and then, you know, been involved with with many different different groups, including um, we have a local chapter for women in film and TV. Um, and so I've you know been really lucky to find a lot of support, a lot of resources. Um, and so, yeah, for the last 
you know, 12, 13 years been working, working on it <laughs> and um, had some successes, some with feature scripts, some with short scripts. Awesome. Um, ironically, I do have to say it's, it's for whatever reason, it's been more short scripts that have been my big winners. Um, I'm very really? good with short scripts. Yes. <laughs> and I also, and I also produce short films. So I don't know, there's something, there's something about the format that just really works for me. I really enjoy it. It's hard to write short format too. I mean, writing a short script, you know, it sounds easy. Like you'll, you'll see writers like, I'm just going to make this short real quick. And they they make it sound like it's, it's not a big deal. But if you're packing a bunch of drama into a short page count, that takes almost like a mastery to do it because you can't kind of create filler over time to try and find the story we got to have the story we got to know who the character is we need to know everything that's happening so it's i I actually am impressed that that um you're so good at that genre (laughs) um funny thing you say that because yeah my um mentor um originally i learned you know long form with him and then later you know went back and learned um short form and i have to say definitely writing short form makes you a better writer, in my opinion, because exactly for what you said, you have to be more uh, precise. You have to be more intentional um, and you have to get it all condensed down. Ideally, 10 pages or less. I mean, you can push it, but I mean, ideally 10 pages or less if you're going to make a really effective short. Obviously, the, the rules don't apply as strictly with documentary. I know that because I have a 27 minute short documentary on PBS that's doing quite well. Um, But I do both. I do both narrative and documentary um, because I just love film, but that's a different story. Um, (laughs) But yeah, short film, I'm going to say writing short scripts has made me a better writer in general. And it made me even go back to um, my feature scripts and, you know, polish them up because it just, yeah, it really does make you up level your craft and, um, tell, tell a tighter story and you're not, you're not mincing words. Absolutely. Um, why screenwriting? Because you said that you were a writer, you know, you wrote a book when you were younger and then you got into screenwriting. So what was that moment where you're like, I want to get into screenwriting? Um, I don't think, you know, writing, um, I mean, I've had to write, you know, short stories. I've had to write essays, obviously, you know, being college educated at some point, especially if you're doing, you know, anything with literature or the arts, at some point, you're going to have to do that. I did that. It's okay. Um, But that's not my, that's not my form. I mean, film is my format. Um, And again, I don't care if it's short, documentary, narrative, you know, feature, I'm, I've even worked on web series. Um, I mean, That's I don't fun. care. It doesn't matter. It just has to be film. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just, yeah, no other form of writing really gelled with me. And I'll, I'll tell you, um, one of one of the first uh, examples that I had of battling with the whole novel writing issue is um, I... Um, I went to Pitch Fest um, about a decade ago and with my very first feature script, and that did quite well in, in competitions. Um, and that was even before, like, I polished it. Like, I'm still amazed um, 10 years ago that that script even did anything because I was, like, when I looked at it later as as I was, you know, working on my craft yeah. and, and, and whatnot, I was, like, wow this is really bad. How did it get, (laughs) how did it get as far as it did? This is terrible. Um, And then I made it better and then it did better. Um, But, but when I took that particular script to uh, Pitch Fest and I met, I had a a one-on-one meeting with an executive there and um, she was trying to convince me to turn it into a novel because there's plenty of, you know, examples of people who've taken their screenplay, turn it into a novel gotten some following and then turned right. it, you know, into a script and then into a a film. And I just, I could not do that. I just, yeah. I really could not do that. It wasn't my form of writing. It's not, 
you know, the art form that I gravitate yeah. towards. And I ironically, over the years, I have actually come to know many successful novelists. Um, again, living in the Twin Cities, you you name it, we've got it. And um I live in a very artistic community and and I've known many novelists. And it's just, it's not my form. And there's just a different way that they approach storytelling than I do. And it's just, it's a completely different zone to be in. And I know some screenwriters do it. I have a friend that um, that's what she does is she takes scripts, turns them into to books. Um, and it's been very successful for her. And turning one of her scripts into a book is how she actually got her script optioned. But it's just not, I have, I really struggle with it. It's not my art form. Um, so I, I really find it difficult to, to um, do that. So it never really gelled with me. Um, but scripts, I, I love, I love screenwriting. So it's just, there's, and I know for some people struggling with the form, um, it, that's, that's a real, that's a real challenge for some people. Um, even people who are trying to do it, who are intentional, about yeah. what they're doing it's it's a struggle i'm actually helping somebody right now trying to oh, get their head around formatting because yeah it's, you know it's not a, it's not an easy thing to um to do for for everyone sorry i have a we have an extra guest here sorry oh we do, we don't mind we we welcome fur babies on the show here <laughs> as, as special cameo guests um there is something to be said for knowing who you are and knowing your voice. I mean, that's, that's my voice. I can't sing, I can't dance, but damn, right. I can write you a screenplay. Yeah. And, um, and that is, that is very much what I'm, what I'm hearing from what you're saying is like, this is my voice is what I can do. And, and some yeah. people can do both. Some people can write that novel and, and build that IP and then get that IP sold. But that's not an easy thing. Like, let's say you, you can, you know, convert your voice and into a novelist, you still have to build that audience, right? which is a ton of work. It's a, I mean, not even getting into like the social media and stuff, but yeah. just building an IP from scratch to then one day try and sell it is an option. It is a ton of work and you have to be, you have to be really into it in order to, to find the will to be able to do it. No, um, absolutely. I mean, that's the thing, screenwriting in and of itself. I mean, that's, become something you know radically different over you know the past decade and and that you have to have a business head for just as much as you have to have yeah. the creative side for it. and a lot of people I see a lot of people struggle with that mm -hmm. um now luckily in that hiatus <laughs> um from when I was actually working in, in film right out of college to when I went in a completely different direction um where I was, you know, in business and an entrepreneur and all of that. Oddly, I find that those skills are helping me sure. greatly at this time because there's so much that's changed with the business. You don't just yeah. write a script and hand it off to somebody else and they take care of it. No, no, no. Yeah. There's this whole world of things that you have to do. And if you want to, you know, push the needle along, you know, to get that song played, it's like, you gotta, you know, you gotta keep working it. And I see a lot of other screenwriters struggle with that. Yeah. Um, and it's, no, it's, it's all part of the process. I know it doesn't feel like it's part of the process, but it, but it is part of the process at this time. And so we gotta go, we gotta go with it. <laughs> oh man, absolutely. I mean, one of the best screenwriters I know who's getting her work out there being read by you know guys like De Niro um she's a business major there you go yeah and and a hell of a screenwriter but through the two of those she's so savvy yeah and and that is exceptionally important to be able to have a mind like that so you can just look beyond the creative and bring it together because you 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 are your business essentially so you know there's so many other factors you don't even realize and just talking about formatting i tell my students or people i mentor i say listen formatting is the easy part let's learn how to tell a story okay yeah. we can fix formatting that's 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 black and white that is easy like you're stressing over something that is like an easy fix so um Tell me about your award-winning short, A Stop Along the Road. Let's get your, your log line. Yeah. Okay. So here's my formal log line. 
Um, based on a true story, a young American woman has an unexpected and haunting encounter when she and her fellow sightseers stop at a roadside snack stand next to a small remote village in India. So wow. <laughs> this is What's... actually, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, please. I want to hear more. Yeah. So this is actually based on uh, a real experience that I had in India about 25, no, it has to be more than that, about, yeah, 25, 27 years wow. ago. Um, so I was um, newly married. Um, my husband, um, at the time, we had, um, you know, just been married for, you know, a couple years, and we went to go see his family. And um, his family is uh, in, a, in a state called Odia, which is, uh, well, now it's called Odia. Um, back at the time, it was called Orissa. And it's near Calcutta, if you're familiar with the Bay of Bengal. Um, okay. So it's near the ocean. And um, we were actually coming back um, from an excursion uh, to a, a religious village called Puri. And we were coming back and we were going through this little uh, village and, you know, kind of like all very tree lined. Um, and then there was like this open field and there was a little, some little stands that were selling, you know, coconuts for coconut juice. And um, it was a hot day. We were thirsty. It was a long drive back to um, his family's town. And so we decided to stop and we do. And this woman comes, you know, while we're just sitting there sort of hanging out, this woman comes out of this, you know, forest grove and she's just running and she runs across the field and, okay, don't think anything of it. Well, there's a train coming in the distance. And I thought, oh, she's, you know, running to go meet somebody at the train stop or something. And then the next thing you know, there's a group of people running out of the- Whoa tree area like after her and then the next thing you know um you know they're yelling at her to you know stop and uh there's this guy i'm assuming you know was her husband that was you know yelling after her and then the next thing you know you hear these people scream and mm -hmm. somebody from the crowd like comes over and explains that yeah she committed suicide by putting her head down on the railroad track. And of course the oh train going God. at full her force, you know, couldn't stop. And um, my uh, husband's uh, cousin said, said, oh yeah, um, her husband was probably beating her. And it was just like, also like matter of fact. Oh my God. And yeah, and come to find out. So then it just so happened, um, my husband's aunt happened to be um, happened to be uh, an attorney, and she explained to me about how like there's no there. I'm hoping things have improved. That was quite a while ago, um, but at the time, like women didn't have like legal resources. As a female lawyer, she had a hard time getting hired to do work. Nobody wanted to hire her. She kind of got the throwaway jobs or the jobs that nobody else wanted to do in her law firm. Um, she was, you know, the lowest rung on the totem pole. Um, and it was kind of a dire situation for women, you know, especially a woman that was in a little village, you know, that was remote and away from everything. You know, they don't have like any resources or support. Yeah. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, I could get into some other, you know, things that happened, but I mean, sadly, what I've come to discover was that um, there's an extremely high rate of suicide of married women in India, which I have, you know, oh at the gosh. end of the film. Okay. Um, I, I put that in the I put that in the story. Um, it's the highest in the world, um, and so the crazy thing is, like after like that happened and I wasn't writing, you know, I wasn't writing at that time. Mm -hmm. And then when I did start writing, the thing is over the last, you know, 12 years, I kept trying to put that situation into other scripts. Yeah. Like I, 
I tried to like, you know, like there was an, a, a story that I was writing in particular that takes place in India. I tried to put it in there. Then there was another story, you know, that I wrote. No, oh, maybe it'll fit in there. And I kept trying to smush it into other stuff. Because I'm yeah. like, I got to tell this story. And it just, it never fit. It never felt natural. And people were always like, why did you, why did that happen? You know, and it always felt like it was added on. So then finally, you know, as I was going on with producing all these shorts and, you know, doing all this other work, finally, I said, okay, no, this is a short story all by itself. It needs to give, be given the proper attention alone. I mean, it's an important enough story that it can be told yeah. alone. And so that's what I did. And um, so I, it's been, you know, it's been in the festivals for a few years. Um, a cover fly, I'm somewhere, you know, like in the top, you know, percentages for, um, you know, readership on, on that. Um, I'm trying to look it up, like, right as I'm talking to you. Um and that, yeah, it, it has a lot of following. It's gotten a lot of, you know, accolades. Um, it's an important story. And so it I think is. people people recognize it because it is, um, you know, such an important story. And the, and the timing of it, too. I think originally, I think originally it just wasn't getting quite the reception. And then obviously since the time. Yeah. Uh, when I was putting it into scripts and people were kind of reacting. Um, I think, you know, from then to now, you know, we've had me too, we've had times yeah. up, you know, we've had other things happen in the world. And so now people are more receptive, you know? And so I think that makes a huge difference too. I mean, timing is, you know, timing is everything. So right now I'm in the top 10% of Coverfly. Um, well, that makes I've sense. I mean, I mean, won a number of awards. It, it's a powerful story. And what I'm fascinated with is, is, is that this story, you've been wanting to tell it, like you've had this cathartic need to get it out there. Um, and screenwriting is your platform. So you've been trying to figure out where to put it. And then I think going, you know, this has got to be its own thing. This yeah. is the time. I think that makes a lot of sense. And obviously um, it is resonating with people. Um, so, and, and Coverfly is, is a great way for people to get exposure to it as well, you know? So I think, I mean, I, I think that that says a lot. And when, when you were writing it, did you kind of feel like an emotional release? Um, it was, I mean, obviously it's really hard to write. It's hard to yeah. talk about, um, yeah, I mean, there was a little bit, you know, a little yeah. bit of a sense of, of relief. It's still always sad, like, because I can course. tell you exactly what she was wearing. I can tell you exactly what she looked like. I mean, I remember yeah. everything, like, about that whole situation. Um, you know, it's etched in my brain. Um, right. But, um, yeah, uh, it's, it, it was, it helped. It helped because I was so frustrated, you know, that, I felt like I had to get it out there and like I wasn't getting it out there. Um, and I do, I do find screenwriting cathartic on many levels because yeah. there is, I mean, writers do put a piece of themselves into everything that they write. And there are like things that I'm able to weave into stories, uh, whether or not it's biographical or not. And I do tend to write a lot of biographical stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not above exploiting myself to <laughs> right. to tell stories. <laughs> so, um, with a stop along the road, um, uh, our sponsors came out, and um, Ink Tip, for instance, uh, is providing you a a pro membership, which is pretty awesome. So you can put your work yeah. on there and really take advantage of 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 their of their network of producers and and uh and and managers out there which i love ink tip i think they're great we've actually had script summit writers who have um been optioned on ink tip before so yeah. pretty fantastic um and then and then writer duet also provides their software which i really love it's great if you if you've ever co-written with somebody you can use writer duet to co-write a script together which i do with with uh students that i mentor even so is there anything that I haven't 
asked you that I should have before we wrap up? Oh, um, wow. Um, no, I, I guess what I would just say to piggyback on what you were just saying is, you know, there, there is sort of this, um, writing is very creative. And it's very solitary, but at the same time, you have to be out in the world and you have to take advantage of all these resources that are out there, whether yeah. it's, you know, Coverfly or Inktip or, you know, any of these other writer do it. Yeah. You know, services that are out there or um, tools that are out there. I mean, obviously, there's a gajillion books. Um, yeah. you, you were you were saying that we, you know, that we met one time at a film festival i've attended many many film festivals um we in minnesota we have a ton of film festivals uh some very you know prominent ones but i mean nice interesting variety of them um because to me and and i've traveled all over the world to attend film festivals for my films um because it's just nice to see like where you're connecting with people because that's what film is about it's like where are you connecting with your audience, who's your audience, um, what kind of people are attracted to these um, stories. Um, you know, I have personally have a feeling, and I know people will disagree with me, um, but personally, I'm grateful for all the film festivals that are out there because each film has its own path, each film has its own group. And you need to find who that group is. And um, I value all the different film festivals. I personally, any film festival that I attend, I get something out of it. Whether it's, even if it's, I just saw one great film. I don't care. That's fine. I always meet new people. Yeah. I always make new friends. Maybe I make an, a connection, you know, that's, you know, worthwhile. I have friends that I met from Pitch Fest. That not only have I still been friends with to this day, but I've even done, you know, business. We've done awesome. business together. So, I mean, you just never know like where these things are going to land or how it's going to end up. Um, and so many resources and so many people uh, that I've met over the years. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't trade any of it. I mean, so I truly, I mean, there's some people that are very, oh, you have to pick just the particular, you know, film right. festivals. I don't feel that way at all. I, I really value all the film festivals out there. Um, and each one of them has a different, you know, thing to offer. I mean, obviously you can't submit to all of them. You will literally go broke. I mean, <laughs> so you do need to pick and choose, be careful, you know, be selective. True. Okay. Be selective. And do your research more. and do, and do, do your, your research. research on it. Yeah. But, Absolutely. but it's, you know, but it's, and, you know, it's as a writer, again, I find value from the festivals and the competitions um, because you need to find out how your work is landing. You don't know that, again, existing in isolation, you don't know until you put it out there. And then you see how your work lands and, and what's resonating with people, how are people, you know, what are the reactions, you know, that sort of thing. Um, to add to my repertoire as if I don't have enough hyphenates and <laughs> all the things that I do. I actually wrote a short play recently and was just part of the Minnesota Fringe Festival, which is a, a, week, and, a week and a half long uh, yeah. festival of, of plays. And so I wrote this short play, it only had three actors. And I mean, that's, a, that's an, another way to play with material. Um, and that you get obviously immediate reaction, you know, from people about how they react. And of course, that's different because you can you can adjust <laughs> immediately, <Yeah. laughs> whereas with film, you know, you can't. So that's why that's why I find script reading, you know, invaluable um, screenwriters workshop again, which I had mentioned earlier that I'm a part of. One of the things that we do are monthly script reads and members can, you know, uh, volunteer to have their scripts read uh, for a monthly script read. And I find that absolutely invaluable as a tool um, because 
hearing other people read it and and get that kind of commentary like after you've workshopped it with your script group um mm -hmm. that is really really invaluable to hear it um rather than just read it um because there's things that you catch that you just don't in reading it no matter how good you are and and it just it's such a great tool i just would recommend it to anybody if you can if you can find a resource or pull together a bunch of actors right i just had a conversation with a local actor actually just a couple of days ago find local actors that are looking you know to make oh, a name yeah. for themselves they're, they're always hungry working. to perform they want to do this they they want to hone their craft just as much as you want to hone your craft yeah absolutely and they'll just do it for fun you know so no pressure <laughs> no, I and I also want to go back to when you're when we were talking about researching um, festivals. One of the reasons why I love Coverfly so much is that they vet all of their festivals before they let them in. So Script Seven, for instance, we were vetted by Coverfly, and Coverfly approached us and said, "Hey, we want to bring you onto the platform." Um, whereas other places, you you know, any you got a million festivals on there, who knows if they're good. Um, Coverfly are all pre-vetted, so I think that's that's another reason why they're so fantastic. Um, Kelly, what is your social media where somebody can reach out to you? Let's see. I'm on Facebook, uh, Kelly Lampfear Dash, um, K E L L Y, uh, Lampfear Dash. It's hyphenated. Um, L A M P H E A R hyphen. And then the actual word dash D A S H. Right. And I'm also on Instagram at Kelly Lampier dash and um, also on Twitter. I also believe that's the same. Uh, cool. So, yeah. So I'm all right everywhere. <laughs> well, thank you again for being on the show, Kelly. And once again, congratulations for winning Best Short on Script Summit. Well, thank you. And I do have to say, um, I cannot begin to tell you like how many uh, compliments and people have reached out to me um, because of that. It's, uh, it's a very uh, well-respected competition. <laughs>